Okay, so in today's video, we're going to go over how to make your uh, Minn Kota Enduro trolling motor into basically a uh, homemade power drive with power lift. Uh, you can use any of the uh, Minn Kota Enduro models to do this with. Uh, this is a 55 here I'm just using for demonstration, but I have a uh, 30 and a 45 on my other kayaks. But uh, we're going to tear this one down take the switch out of the head of it, show you how to do all that, take it out. Uh, then we'll tear this one down also, and I'm going to go over uh, every part that you'll need, bolts, aluminum, uh, the quick attach plate. Also, we'll go over the switches, the wiring, uh, how to wire all this up, the joystick here, and the relay, and the control knob. So, From start to finish, hopefully this will give you a lot better idea of how to build this trolling motor. I know it looks complicated, but once you really get into it, it's a lot simpler than what it looks. But uh, hopefully by the end of the video, you'll get a lot better idea of how to build your own. So let's get started. All right, so now we're just going to go over the tools and parts and kind of stuff that you're going to need. Uh, first, you're going to need a pair of safety goggles and gloves here in protection. Cutting this aluminum, it gets really loud and a lot of flakes come flying off of it. So definitely want some hearing protection, eye protection. Uh, you want a marker, tape measure, uh, you want a set of ranches, socket set, uh, just a regular old four and a half inch grinder, doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something to make your cuts with, uh, just a power drill, uh, just a bit set that goes up to three eighths, uh, a level, and also you want these four and a half inch cutoff wheels, you can get these at Lowe's, Tractor Supply, they're just little thin cutoff wheels, real good for cutting aluminum any kind of metal really but and this one here you want this one to smooth off your cuts and your hose that you drill it's just a real fine sanding disc made for metal it's an 80 grit uh, four and a half inch real good for smoothing off aluminum making it look re real smooth and pretty uh, moving over you want some uh, wire cutters you also want some wire crimpers I really like this set right here uh, makes the crimps real secure uh, some electrical tape some yellow and blue wire connectors a uh, little wire holder cl clamp here just need one of them uh, I will go over all the the switches and everything I'll link them down in the description they're kind of hard to find so uh, you only gonna need one of these and your joystick if you want to use that uh, moving over to the nuts and bolts uh, I kind of wrote down how many you need here and everything but, uh, one quarter by 20 I like to use grade 8 boats as well. Uh, they just hold up real good to water usage. They don't rust very well. Uh, 3 quarter inches long. You'll need 10 of them. 1 inch long. Just need 4 of them. Uh, one and a half inch. You'll need 2 of them. And also we'll need locking nuts for all this as well. Uh, 5 sixteenths by 18. You need 1 3 inch boat and 1 5 inch boat. Uh, 3 eighths by 16. You'll need 1 5 inch boat. Moving on to the aluminum, uh, this aluminum here is two inches wide by one and a quarter inches tall, and it's one quarter inch thick. You'll need about 24 inches of this total, so if you, I'll try to link a description. I can, hopefully I can find some on eBay. I can link in the description. That's 24 inches. Uh, you will need just a little piece of flat metal. This is two inches wide. You can get either three sixteenths or one quarter inch thick. You're only going to need 10 inches of this, so I'll try to find that on eBay as well. Uh, moving on to the aluminum spacers. Uh, you're just going to need two of these made for a 5 16 hole. They're 1 and 1 8 inch long. need two of them. Uh, you will need one copper elbow. This is 1 inch copper elbow. You can get that at Lowe's or your hardware store like Home Depot. That's going to be your topper for your trolling motor. So. Oh, you will need, um, this is your control knob that you'll put on your factory switch so you can know what forward and reverse and everything is. just makes everything easier as far as turning your speed. Um, we'll need a SAE plug. You're going to need three of these. You can get these on Amazon or eBay, just real handy little plugs here. Most of these come in sets. Uh, you can get both of them together. Uh, this is a motor guide trolling motor plug. You'll need both the male and the female of this. I really like that plug. Uh, you'll need nylon uh, washers. 
this is just a kit that you get at Harbor Freight. It comes with uh, different sizes. And they're only like a dollar for this, so you will need them. I just like putting them between moving parts. It kind of helps on noise and just makes everything smoother. Uh, you will need some kind of electrical box if you plan on uh, mounting all your switches and everything back there at your kayak seat. Um, you can get these on Amazon or eBay. It's just a little electrical box, plastic. Um, moving on. This is a uh, Minn Kota aluminum quick attach plate. This is the flat one. Um, this is just the top portion here. You'll mount, you'll mount the other portion on your kayak. But one thing I want to talk about here, um, not just this type of troll motor that I'm building, but if you're wanting to put like a uh, the uh, Motor Guide iX3 or the Minn Kota power drive on your kayak, this is all you need. Um, you don't have to build this troll motor here. I'm just telling you this to give, give you more options or ideals. But if you're wanting to spend the money and you're wanting to put a, a troll motor like that on the front of your kayak, all you really need is this quick attach plate here. You mount the other portion to your kayak, run a power plug for your troll motor, and mount your troll motor to this portion of your quick attach plate, and you're ready to go. So that makes, if you're wanting to go that route, it is kind of simpler. Um, you're going to need one power drive housing. I'll link that in the description below. Um, this, this isn't the way it looks when you first get it. So, but, uh, you're going to need one, uh, coupling here. This is the factory coupling. If you buy a factory Enduro troll motor like this kit is going to be built with, it comes with one of these. So you already have that, but you will need it. Um, this one is a Minn Kota power drive coupling. The only difference is you see that half moon cutout right there in it. And that mates up to your power drive housing down there. And that's how it turns. That's pretty simple, actually, but you'll need one of those. Um, you are going to need an 8-inch stroke cylinder. This is a 14 millimeter per second speed. This is pretty much the fastest one I could find. Um, just make sure you get the 8-inch stroke length. Uh, that way you can actually have enough to pull your tow motor out of the water. You're only going to need one of them. Oh, I think I've about got all the parts and everything covered. Uh, one thing I want to talk about is the miter saw. This is just a regular miter saw with a regular wood cutting blade in it. But most people don't know this, but these cut aluminum very, very well. It makes aluminum cuts real smooth, makes it easy. Um, like I said, you don't absolutely need this. It will make your life easier cutting the aluminum. But you can cut your aluminum with this four and a half inch uh, cutoff wheel right here. It just isn't as smooth and as pretty as cuts as the saw makes. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Like I say, you don't have to have it to build this kit, but it does make life a little easier. I think that's uh, pretty much it. We'll uh, get started. All right, so we're going to start off taking the head apart first. It's got uh, six screws located all around it. All you got to do is just take them out. Okay, so now we got all six of our screws out. We're just going to take the head of it off right here. This little plastic piece, set it aside. Grab your handle, and we're wanting this switch right here out of it. All we're going to do is work it out, just like that. And you can see that's all, really it's in the head there, that's about it. But it's got a, we just pull the handle off here. There we go. Set that aside. And we'll just unplug these. These are all uh, color coded in there, so you ain't got to worry about uh, getting them wrong. It has, I'll show you in just a second. Okay. Now, if you look at that switch, it has your battery plus and minus. Uh, it has the uh, other red wires, it has yellow and the, uh, the white wire there color coded. Uh, with the written right there on it. So you don't have to worry about messing it up when you wire it back up. So that right there is what we want out of there. We're going to take this and put it inside our box to control our trolling motor with back at our seat. So now we got that apart, we'll take this head off and run our wires through so we can do the rest of it. Okay, so we're going to take this part off of it, this head right here. All it has is a little straight screw right here. Take your Phillips screwdriver and break it loose and unloosen it and that will allow you to take this head off also 
a lot of people don't know this, but if you want to use this as a uh, bow mount trolling motor, you know, if you have some kind of mount up there where you can mount it, all you have to do is take that screw right there out, turn this completely around, and then put that screw back in, and your head will be the right way, and your motor will be the right way for a bow mount trolling motor. Okay, so now we have that screw out. We have our, our wires loose here where they can come straight through. And all we're going to do now is wiggle that head. There it goes. And it's just going to, we're just going to slowly run our wires through. And there you go. Now, I'm going to set that aside. Now, just make note that these two wires and these two wires go to the switch. And when you wire it back up again, um, you want to make sure not to get them confused with your battery wires. Uh, the battery wires, one is a black and red wire, and the one that goes to the motor is a solid red wire. So just make sure that you run your battery wires to the switch and make note of the size and color and everything of them compared to which ones go to your trolling motor. These two wires are just signal wires. They tell it to go forward and reverse. Uh, it's really hard to get them mixed up. I would go and buy some uh, like a trailer wiring kit. It has a yellow and white wire so that you can use the actual color, the right colors to go through your kayak back to your switch so you don't get them confused. Uh, for these two wires, I used a uh, jumper cables. I, I went to uh, Harbor Freight. You can get like the cheapest set they have, a uh, pretty good sized wire, and they're like 20 foot long. Uh, and it's cheap, it's like $9. And that's what I use for my uh, power wire for this. And I used what was left over to use for my battery wires. You know, it's a big, big gauge wire. It can handle the amps and the power. So that's just a, a good way to get wire, you know, not spend a lot of money on it. And it's good wire. Okay, so now we got our uh, head tucking apart. We got our switch out of there. We got them parts over there. We're not going to need them anymore. So now we'll uh, take this and your little uh, uh, depth gauge here. We'll take it off and that right there off. Okay, now we got that all taken apart. Uh, you will want to keep this little collar here. Uh, we will use that on our new setup, so make sure to keep it. Uh, the stern mount right there, you won't need it anymore, so you can discard it with the rest of your parts. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I shorten the shaft on my trolling motors. Um, for me, I like to short them down to around 26 to 25 inches. That's measuring from the collar right there at the bottom uh, going up. So uh, around 25, 26 inches is what I normally like to shorten them to. That way it doesn't hit a lot of things when you're in shallow water. But uh, how I do that is you see your wires here. You got some open space right there. Try to get a boat or a flat piece of metal that will just fit into that flat space. That way it'll keep your wires pushed down to the bottom. You can feel the wires in there and you can feel the space when you tap it against your trolling motor shaft. Now what I like to do is take your tape measure measure how long your boat is about six inches stick your boat in there and make sure your wires are where they need to be and where you feel comfortable with it and measure back about five inches and move your collar up right there about five inches and then use that collar tighten it back down as your uh, measuring guide or your marking guide. Just make a mark plumb around it, just like that. And then you will uh, loosen it up. Loosen it up in the vise here. 
move it back out of the way now we'll tighten that back down and what I normally do is I use a uh, my grinder with a four and a half inch cutoff wheel you can get these at a tractor supply uh, Lowe's anywhere like that there's this real thin four and a half inch cutoff wheel and just uh, use that to cut a circle about a half moon and then you'll turn this over and do the other side and when your wires are out of the way and you'll just continue that until you get down to like I, like I said around 25 to 26 inches okay so once you get your uh, troll motor shaft all cut off in the right length that you want it to be at next thing we're going to do is uh, drill a hole in our topper which is our uh, one inch copper elbow a uh, one inch copper elbow fits perfect over this uh, troll motor shaft so that's what I always use for my toppers uh, you'll just take tape measure and make a mark uh, right there about three eighths inch back from the edge right here on both top and bottom and what you'll do is you'll drill a hole on top and turn it over drill a hole through the bottom and then run it pump through uh, make sure your hole's nice and straight okay so uh, after you get your hole drilled on both sides of your elbow you want to put your elbow on there with it facing up and take the propeller and have it facing up as well you want to take and line that up perfectly with that propeller facing up that way when you uh, put it on your kayak that right there will let you know which way your trail motor is facing all the time and once you get that all lined up the way you want it take your marker and mark your hole on both sides of your trail motor shaft on front and back and once you do that take this elbow back off and uh, drill your hole on this side turn the shaft over make sure your wires are out of the way drill your hole on that side and then put the elbow back on and make sure you can get a boat uh, straight through them two holes right there once you do that it should your boat should come through perfectly and then you can boat that on there but uh, once you get that all straightened up and everything take the elbow back off and we'll put it back on later okay so now you got your uh, troll motor shaft cut off you got your uh, elbow ready and everything we're done with that now we're going to start cutting the aluminum and making our uh, top portion here ready to put the troll motor on it so starting off you're going to want to cut one piece 13 and 1 8 inch long then you're going to want to cut two pieces that are four and three quarter inches long so you put them in your saw cut them real quick and then we'll move on to getting the right angles and everything all right so once you get your pieces cut this is the 13 and a uh, 1 8 inch long piece here and what i'm going to do is just turn the saw over to uh 45 degree angle lock it in right there and I'm just going to cut that flat uh, smooth right there off so you just want to put on a 45 just cut it like that right there you want to do both ends that way on this long piece so you'll do both ends of that piece there make it look like that pretty simple and then you take your shorter pieces the four and three quarter and you'll do the one end of that same thing 45 degrees then you'll come in this other end and you'll just do one side uh, you'll have to turn your saw around one way to do one side and the other way to do the other side but you want to leave one side up so you can mount your uh, drive housing in there so that's how you get that cut okay so once you get your two smaller pieces here cut and get your angle there your two pieces cut off the front what we're going to do we're going to sandwich both sides together the two flat sides right there and what we're going to do we're going to mate them perfectly together put our vice grip on there again make sure they're nice and perfect together and you're going to come in here with your drill with your 3 8 drill bit and drill a hole through both of them right there nice and straight that way uh your, that, that's what will mount to your power drive housing make it nice and straight and smooth so your boat can go through both sides okay so now you got your hole cut in your two short pieces there now you want to move on to your longer piece and what you want to do right there at the top of that 45 degree cut measure two inches back just make a mark right there close to the top as you can get and 
you would then take a uh, 5 sixteenths drill bit and drill that hole right there. Okay, so now we're going to work on getting our two shorter pieces here mounted to the top portion of our quick attach plate. These are the 4 and 3 quarter inch long pieces here. We just got done drilling our 3 8 inch hole on both sides. And now we're going to work on drilling our holes in these here that will attach to that plate. And what you want to do, you want to have 3 quarter of an inch overhang over the front of that plate. Make a mark on both sides just like that. Line that bottom mark up on the back side of your plate there. And once you've done that, and the reason you want to make your top mark, is throw your one inch washer on there, hold it up against that mark, and make your one mark here. Push it back, make another mark there. Do that on both of them. And then take this off, drill these two holes first on each one of these. And then we'll bring them back over to your plate and line everything up for the housing to sit between them and then we'll drill the holes in the plate next okay so now you got your four holes drilled and your two short pieces here and now we want to get them distanced apart so our power drive housing will fit in the front of it and what you want to do measure three and three eighths on front and back get them nice and straight and again you want three quarter of an inch overhang on the front of these once you get everything straight where you want it, you want to come in here and mark your four holes on top of your quick attach plate right there. Take these pieces off, drill those four holes next, and then we'll be ready to bolt them on and put our power drive housing in here and make sure it's all straight and everything's smooth. Okay, so now we got our two little pieces done. They're on there good. We want to move on to our longer piece. Again, this piece here is 13 and 1 8 inch long. And we want to have an overhang onto our plate of four and one eighth. And again, you'll want to measure back four and one eighth, make a mark on both sides again, just like you did on the front two. You'll come in here with your washer and just mark uh, three holes, kind of spaced out like an inch or so. And once you do that, you'll drill in three holes in this part first. Then we'll bring it back over here and you'll want to center it on this plate left to right and have it lined up again on your back uh, four and one eighth back and once you do that you'll mark these three holes on your quick attach plate and you can drill them and bolt this piece to it okay so at this point i just want to show you what this should look like that's what our front piece is you got a three quarter inch overhang here then you have a four and one eighth overhang here on top of your plate. All right, so now we're going to go back and work on our cylinder. We have to cut out a little bit of material here so our cylinder will fit inside that uh, piece of channel there. All right, so now uh, you just want to put it into your vise here again. And we have to take out about one sixteenth of an inch on both sides of this so our cylinder will fit in here. So all you want to do is take your cut off. Uh, wheel here your four and a half inch cutoff wheel on your grinder and just slowly take out about a sixteenth of an inch on both sides of that and that way our uh, back of our cylinder here will fit right down in that channel perfectly okay so now we got our uh, cylinder installed we went ahead and I uh, put the five sixteenths by three inch with the uh, nylon washers in there to keep it nice and steady um, when you get this cylinder in the mail, the back and front right here, it will have a one quarter inch hose. I did drill them out to five sixteenths just for the bigger boats. Um, so that's just kind of something to keep in mind. You will want to drill them hose out when you get your cylinder in the mail. Now we got that done, we're going to go ahead and move on to our uh, power drive housing in the front portion. All right, so now I got the power drive housing bolted in there. I used the 3 8 by 5 inch bolt to do that. Um, it's one thing to note on this, make sure that it just moves freely back and forth. It shouldn't feel like it's in a bind or anything. It shouldn't have much wiggle to it. There should be a hair wiggle but nothing real loose wobbly feeling. Um, there is some nylon washers down on both sides so that helps take up any kind of noise or anything. It makes it real smooth as well. Um, 
Now I'll show you how to take this apart so that we can drill our two holes here on both sides to mount our brackets to actually mount it to the cylinder. So coming back here, it's got six little bolts there, there, all the way around it. And you'll just take them six bolts out and then we'll take the top off of it first. All right, so now we're gonna take this top part off. All the motors and the gears are in this top part. This bottom part is just basically a housing. It has little end dimples in it that hold the uh, shafts for the gears. So we're just going to start by taking a screwdriver. And you'll see it crack open there. And what you want to do is just take your screwdriver and just barely stick it in there. Work your way around it. Pop that open. Just kind of take your time with it. Go all the way around it. when you get it to a certain point where it feels pretty loose you want to lean it back like that right there and we'll take and wiggle it open you might have to use your screwdriver again with some spots of it there it goes and now it should just um, slowly come apart just like that as you can see, there's a lot of little dimple things right here. They just hold these ends of these shafts that these gears are on. Let me turn that around where you can look at it. You can see there's a, a lot of gears, a little electric motor right there, uh, grease on all of it. But that's what your shaft goes through right here. That's the uh, inside of it there. But this bottom part, swing it back over here. Um, none of the gears actually go down into this bottom part, so you can put your bolts in here to mount your brackets to. So we'll do that next. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is get our 2-inch aluminum, and we want to cut two pieces that are 4 and 3 quarter inches long. Okay, so when you're making your four and three quarter inch pieces out of this flat aluminum. Uh, you want to measure up from the bottom one inch and make a line at one inch and then at four and three quarter make a line and then come over the top right here and you want to come over right at a half inch and make a little mark right there. And then once you do that get your level and at that mark and line it up with the very edge of that bottom mark right there. And then make your line there. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut that out with your grinder, with your cutoff wheel, along this side right here, and then your saw across the top. And then I'll show you what this line is for when we get over to the uh, drive housing. Okay, so now you have your two pieces cut out here at an angle. You can see a nice angle there. Um, you're going to take your one-inch washer again, hold it up against that line right there, then mark your hole here, move it over, mark your another hole right there. And then what you want to do is take these pieces, made them together, about like we did in little pieces earlier. Then you'll vise them down to the table and you'll drill them two holes plumb through. And then you'll do the same thing, turn it around, get your 5 sixteenths bit, and drill that top hole right there. It just has to be right there in the corner. It doesn't have to be perfect. But just make sure these are uh, mated up real good, lined up real good. And then we'll uh, drill our holes in the drive housing next, or marker holes in the drive housing next. All right, so now we got our two little pieces there ready to go. They got the holes drilled in them. Now we're going to drill these holes in our drive housing here. And what you want to do is come in from the front of the drive housing here, make a mark at two and a half inches. On your drive housing probably gonna be kind of hard to see with this black marker on the black surface there but then on this side do the same thing two and a half inches make a mark and then get your piece over here that one inch mark that we made earlier what you want to do is hold it up flush with top of that housing then hold it uh, even with that two and a half inch mark that we just made hold it nice and still 
and make uh, your marks on the drive housing using the hose that we already drilled in this piece on both sides. And once you do that, take that off, drill your hose and your housing on both sides, and then it will be ready to bolt them pieces to your drive housing. Okay, so now we got our four bolt holes here drilled, and we want to go ahead and use our one inch long by quarter inch bolts. Go ahead and put them in there. And now you want to go ahead and put uh, your little quarter inch washers, just two of them, put one on each boat. And what that's going to do is when you put your little aluminum piece here that you made, it's going to have that piece sitting off your drive housing just a sixteenth of an inch. That way it's not actually pushing up against your drive housing. Go ahead and use your locking nuts. And go ahead and snug these down, but don't actually tighten them fully. Alright, so we got our four bolts in here holding our two pieces of aluminum on. They're not tightened yet, they're just snug. And what you want to do is get your 5 sixteenths by 5 inch boat and stick it through the two holes that you made. And that boat should sit there and move freely. It shouldn't feel like it's in a bind or anything. If it is in a bind, just kind of shift these two pieces just a little bit one way or another until it feels, you know, real smooth like that. Once it gets that way, go ahead and tighten up your four bolts fully. Make sure that it's still nice and smooth. Go ahead and remove your boat, and then we'll put the top of the drive housing back on. Okay, so now we're ready to put our top of our drive, ho drive housing back together. So what you want to do is just slowly put it in there like that. Just ease it together. They should seat together just like that. Just slowly push it together. You shouldn't have to, if the motor or this part here gets binded up, you'll, you know, you'll have to take it back apart, but you shouldn't have to force it together. It should just slowly smash together. You know, so you should be able to see that crack right there closing together. Just kind of slowly push it together until it gets that way. All right, now once you have it uh, fully together, Go ahead and put it back again. And we'll go ahead and we'll take and put our six bolts back in. When you tighten these back up, just kind of slowly tighten each one. You know, don't just tighten one fully and then go to the next one. Just kind of slowly, equally tighten them up again. That way that seal and everything will get seated together good. Okay, so now we are ready to uh, attach it to our cylinder. Got our 5 16th bolt here. And... First, you want to put an aluminum spacer on there, and then put uh, three of these nylon 5 16th washers right here on there. Push it forward just a little bit more. And work your way through. Put your washers and stuff on there. Slide it on through. There we go. Now we're just wanting to not fully tighten this. We just want to kind of snug it up. These here just kind of want to be loose like this. These nylon washers right here will take away all the noise. So, uh, like I said, it just should be just snug where it's still kind of loose. All right. So now we got everything tightened up. Everything's working right. Uh, We'll go ahead and put the trolling motor in and do that part. Okay, so now we got the uh, wires ran through here. The trolling motor just sitting there. We want to get our power drive coupling. This is the one with the half moon cutout right here. You can see there's a cutout right here. And what we want to do, we want to run our wires through this first, have it sitting right there. So when we push that shaft through, we can slide this on top of it. That way we don't have to sit there and hold it. So we're just going to put our wires through it. Have it sitting right there. Then we're just going to pick the shaft up. And ease it through. There we go. Now let's put that on there. Snug it up a little bit. And she's sitting there.
And what I'm going to do, I've got my bottom coupling right here. That's the one that you'll take off your factory trail motor. But uh, I'm going to just kind of hold snug up on that, push that down tighter, and then tighten it up with a... Okay, so now that we got that done, that's tight. And uh, I'm going to take our copper elbow that we made earlier, the one that we drilled a hole through. I just painted mine black. I didn't want it being all copper and shiny. So, like I said, we're just going to run the wires through it, just like we did that coupling. And when you put it on, like I said earlier, you want to make sure it's facing the same way your propeller is. That way you'll know which way your troll motor is turning. Now we just put our uh, one and a half inch bolt through here. Sometimes it's kind of tricky to get that boat through them wires. Sometimes you'll have to use like a pick or something to kind of guide it through. And once we have that on there, we'll take our locking nut, put it on the other side of it, and tighten it down. Alright, so now we got everything put together. We got everything tightened up. The troll motor's in there. The only thing left to do now is uh, go through the wiring. Okay, so before I get into all the wiring over there with the cylinder and turning, I want to talk about the wiring of the troll motor. Um, this is actually probably the most simplest part, even though it looks complicated when you take the head off your troll motor because there's so many wires. But um, basically all you're doing is extending these wires back to your seat of your child of your uh, kayak you're just taking this switch right here and moving it back to your seat so basically you're just extending these wires you know the, the white and the red and the black and on this switch right here it has all of them labeled that one's labeled red black and then it has battery plus battery minus and like i said it's labeled right down there so we re you really can't mess it up it has yellow and white but um on the kayak here I just extended my uh, white and yellow using red and black wire, and I just I just made a note of what color is what. Um, your red and black, you just extend it so your kayak. I use jumper cables, you know, just use big wire like that. Um, like I said, I just wanted to go over this. Um, basically, like I always said, you're just basically extending this wire through your kayak to your seat and. You know, I do it in the hole, so you can do it outside of the hole if you want to, too, but, um, like I said, all you're doing is extending it, and you got two battery wires right here that you would just run from wherever you put your battery in your kayak, but, um, hopefully that helps, and then that's where the knob right there goes, your fat, your turning knob, or your speed, or reverse. Hope that helps, uh, we'll go ahead and start getting into the, uh, joystick and, uh, uh, double throw switch right there Okay, so now I'm going to try to show this I try to figure out a good simple way to show it and uh, This is what I come up with so this is for the cylinder and for the turning uh, Motor out there Turn the camera just a little bit Okay, so basically this is like your trail motor battery. You got your two hot wires coming down you got a hot and a ground coming out of your relay right here. And also you got a hot and a ground coming to your double throw switch right here that goes to your cylinder. Now, it's really hard to mess this up because your red and your ground go to the red and the ground on the battery. This one here has got a V plus and a V zero. And over here it's got M1, M2. That's basically motor. And long as you hook red to red, ground to ground, to both of these switches, you're going to be fine. Now, coming to the joystick, that's one thing I like about this relay right here. Move a little bit closer. 
This relay has three wires coming out of it, forward, reverse. Basically, these are just signal wires. And this one black one right here in the middle is just a contact wire between each signal. Basically, think of it as the blue wire is a signal and the green wire is a signal. When you work your joystick, it makes contact with which side it wants to go forward or reverse. So all you have to do on your joystick is wire one side blue, one side green, take the black, and wire it to both sides on this side. And what that, when you do, you just back and forth. You just make a signal which way you want to turn. And you can't, you can't, you can't hook this up backwards. You can't burn anything up because that's what this switch is doing. It's reversing polarity to that motor. And the same thing on the cylinder with this switch right here. It's reversing the polarity whichever way you turn it. So you can't, you can't burn anything up. So it's kind of foolproof in a way. So like I said, you just wire it up to one side, black bone both sides, and you're good to go on your turning with the joystick. Now coming to your cylinder with this double throw switch, these switches here come pre-wired. When you buy it, these blue and these cross wires and these red wires will already be on the switch. You don't have to wire anything up. All you have to do is wire your red and your ground. Then the two blue wires are the same color. You can hook them to either black or red on your motor. It doesn't matter. Because again, all this switch is doing, it's reversing the polarity for you. It's just a momentary momentary switch, you know, you just, it just lets go for you. So let me show you on the cylinder here. So if I go forward, I've got my switch back here. See? And let's say that you have this in your switch box and then you find out that you have it backwards. You know, you want to push back and you want that thing to come up. Well, it doesn't. It goes the opposite direction. All you have to do is unloosen the head of that switch and turn it around the other way. That's it. And then it will work the way you want it to. It's really simple. I really like them switches right there. Um, I just want to mention that you don't have to use the joystick. The only reason I did this is because how big it is. You know, you're going to be turning a lot, and I wanted a big handle so I could turn a lot and not have to be using a little bitty switch like this so if you don't want to use a relay and a joystick you just have to buy two switches like this and then wire them up just like this and it'll work off this switch you don't have to have a relay it'll just turn forward you know backwards or whatever but i just tried to uh try to make it look as simple as i could <laughs> I know it uh, seems like a lot of wiring, you know, it looks like it's complicated when it's on the kayak, but really there's not a lot of wiring here, and all this fits inside that little box on the side of my kayak, so, um, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space or room, and you just run it off your regular 12-volt battery. Um, again, I'll link these in the description below, the joystick, that switch, and this relay. Um, I hope that helps out. I know... You know, I know wiring stuff like this, especially with relays and forward and reverse switches, it gets complicated, but um, I hope this is a simple analogy to kind of show how it all works. But again, you know, you just forward and backwards on your cylinder and left and right. Pretty simple. I'll try to back up and show that a little bit better right here. So I just take a switch here, and I can go down, or turn it the other way. And now if I want to turn left and right, just grab my joystick. Pretty simple. Like I said, you got the two battery wires right here. You got red and black on your relay. And you got red and black on your switch right here. And then your two blue wires right here, they can go to either one, it doesn't matter. 
then your relay right here the same thing you have a red and a black they can go to either one it doesn't matter all you got to do is turn your joystick around the other way just like that switch if it's the wrong polarity it's uh hopefully that makes it as simple as it can get but i appreciate y'all watching hopefully uh hopefully this helps <laughs> i know it's a long process here but um i think you'll enjoy this troll motor once you get it put together especially when you get on the kayak and i've been running these for going on about three to four years now um and I've never had any issue out of them. You know, never had a relay go bad or joystick or anything. So it's a reliable setup. You know, I've tested it and played with it for a long time now. And I never had anything go wrong with it. So hopefully that helps. And I appreciate y'all watching. If you got any uh, questions or anything, drop a comment. And I'll definitely get back with you.